what's going on everybody? Welcome back to Reddit Aliens. I'm John, and today we're going to be looking at a classic topic. Redditors, what are your real-life paranormal stories? Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. My grandparents lived in a farmhouse in rural Canada. It wasn't an old farmhouse at all, probably built like the 1940s or 50s. It was a split level with an unfinished basement with a large cast iron wood furnace. To allow heat to rise, there was a large cutout in the living room floor that was covered with a grate that you could see through into the basement. One day, my grandpa's sitting in the living room alone when he hears a loud crash from the basement. He heads down, then finds that the heavy cast iron tools for the furnace had tipped over and were scattered all over the ground. These things probably weighed like 50 pounds total for the whole set and would have been hard to knock over without some force. When he was kneeling down to pick them up and put them back on their stand, he spots something under the furnace, a single white rose. We all had weird experiences in that house that ranged from cold spots to large floating green masses. There was a bedroom that none of the children wanted to sleep in because of just the vibe of the room and the closest closet being specifically very unnerving. Not my story, but a good friend. On the weekend before leaving for Navy boot camp, he left my family's house in the middle of the night to crash at home, forgetting his keys in the process. After knocking a few minutes in an attempt to wake his dad, he tried the basement window with no luck. Eventually, he walked back to my house, but we were all asleep. After another trek home and a few minutes of pounding on the door, still no luck. Frustrated, he sat on the porch and smoked a cigarette, then heard the faint sound of the lock click. He opened the door to see what he thought was his dad walk down the hall and turn into the kitchen. He walked into the kitchen seconds later to apologize for waking him up. Empty. This is a small townhouse that dead ends in the kitchen. There's nowhere to go. He sprinted up the stairs and pounded on his dad's locked bedroom door. Dad eventually woke up clearly confused and half asleep in his underwear. After the shock started to wear off, they both realized it was the exact year anniversary of his uncle's passing. The person he saw looked like his dad, then was fully clothed in jeans and a white polo with a blue collar. Apparently, his uncle wore this type of outfit every day. Crazy stuff. When I was 17, I started to see a woman out of the corner of my eye, and it started happening more frequently. I should note that I've lived in that house since I was five, and in particular, I always felt something in the basement, and would absolutely bolt up the stairs every time I was leaving it. Back to the woman. I started seeing her more and more frequently, but at any time I turned to get a good look, she was gone. Then, one random night, I was sitting on the couch long after everyone had gone to bed, and I saw her again, but she started chasing me, and I bolted up to the second floor where my bedroom was. I had to sleep with every light in my room on that night, and slept completely underneath the covers because I just knew that whatever was in the basement was now under my bed. I slept with the lights on every night for a week because I was convinced if I didn't, it would kill me. The paranoia and lights on for days happened a few more times over the years, but only ever in that house, nowhere else. Honestly, very possible it was just a psychotic break because the shadow figures in my vision still show up when I'm really, really stressed and same with auditory hallucinations of people calling my name. It's been probably two years since I've had any though, but I've never seen a figure as clearly as I did then. I worked in a hotel that was about 100 years old at the time. I never saw anything that crazy myself, but I'd go into the basement every hour or so and doors would be shut with the lights out one hour and open with the lights on the next. I was the only person in the building with keys to any of those doors. My brother was working there with me. He was coming out of the walk and in reaching for the lock, old style exterior deadbolt kind of fridge, when he heard a voice inside say, no, don't, he freaked out, threw the lock and immediately heard something pounding on the door from the inside. It scared the shit out of him and shook his entire belief system. He quit within the week and refuses to talk about it almost 10 years later. There were a lot of stories from that place corroborated by lots of people. Like I said, I never saw anything that crazy myself, but I also suspect that it's because I wanted it to happen. I could see how hotels could be a good place for paranormal activity. Again, I have never experienced it myself, but with all the people coming and going, it makes sense. 
When I was about 11 at summer camp, we went on an overnight camping trip in the woods. In the middle of the night, nature called, and I went outside. There I saw an older teen. All of our counselors were either high school seniors or young college students in a varsity jacket, standing outside taking a smoke. I asked him where was a good place to go, and he smiled at me. I turned away for a second, and when I looked back, he was gone. The next morning I asked my counselor who the guy was, and when I described him, flat top, varsity jacket, he turned white. He said that in the 50s, a bunch of local kids had gone into the woods and were murdered. I laughed it off, thinking he was just trying to scare me. Several years later, when the internet was a thing, I ended up remembering the incident one day and searching it out. Turns out my counselor was 100% correct, and the hairs on my body stood on end. Ever since then, I've been convinced there are such things as ghosts. I have extremely vivid memories of me and my ex doing a bunch of arts classes for fun as a couple's thing. My ex continued to do landscapes, and she was really good at it. I even remember going to multiple local arts and craft stores buying painting supplies. We broke up, and I remember keeping six of the paintings wrapped up. I even remember multiple times seeing the paintings when going through my storage locker and kept debating to throw them out. We briefly got back together a few years later. I offhandedly mentioned I still had her art, and she was extremely confused. She claimed we never, ever took an art class together, and she has never painted in her life beyond middle school. She also said I never painted anything outside of my wargaming stuff. This caused a huge rift between us. I thought I was right, and she thought she was right. I got so frustrated that we ended up driving out to the storage locker. All six of the canvases were blank and I could not find any of the shared painting supplies that I swear was in a big red plastic container right by the paintings. She honestly thought I was crazy, and I doubted my memory. The relationship ended up falling apart pretty quickly not long after that, and went no contact. Then a few months later, when I went to grab camping supplies from my storage locker, all six paintings were there, no blank canvases, to be found along with the red plastic storage container full of our art supplies including some printouts with both our names from the art class. I ended up tossing it, mostly because I was done with the idea of having a relationship with her and how spooked I was at that point. I'm not really 100% sure what happened there. This happened a couple years ago in my old house. We had friend friends over for a little barbecue and some drinks. For context, it was a two-story house with a full room in the basement and two upstairs. It was a Friday, and I happened to be more tired than usual, so I went to bed before everyone had left. I lived with two roommates at the time, and we had four friends over. I woke up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom right outside my room, but I noticed the light was on. However, my half-asleep self just opened the door anyways, and someone was there sitting on the toilet looking at me. I didn't stare. I was still half-asleep, so I mumbled an apology and went to bed again. Here's the funny thing, though. Next morning, I went to apologize to whoever it was, and my roommate said no one was home for the night. They had gone out and only came back around 5 a.m. That incident happened around 3 a.m. or so. To this day, I don't know who or what I saw, but it was very weird, and it still haunts me sometimes when I think about it. As a kid, I had multiple recurring dreams of standing in my grandparents' backyard and looking at the back of their house. Nothing was visually off, but something just felt horribly wrong. Had that same dream for years, but never mentioned it to anyone because it was so bland. In 2018, my dad walked out to that spot in the yard and killed himself. Haven't had the dream since. Happened when I lived in Glasgow in the 90s. I was walking home late, and about five minutes from my house was a car park I usually cut across. This one night, I reached the edge of it, and it just couldn't step over the low fencing. I could feel I was being watched from the middle of the back of the wall, but I couldn't see anything there. I had to walk around the outer edge as fast as I could, and there was nothing in that spot at all. As soon as I had to get out of view at that point, the feeling stopped. Never crossed that place at night again, and even though it was 30 years ago now, I've never forgotten it. I was babysitting two younger cousins at their home, which was about 100 years old and situated next to a graveyard. There wasn't necessarily a bad feeling in the house whenever we were there, but it was a bit creepy at night looking out at the headstones. I was helping the girls brush their teeth and whatnot before bed, and I headed back downstairs after they were in their beds and I had said goodnight. I sat down, and almost immediately I heard a commotion of doors not slamming but shutting hard, 
and the girls, I believe they were around four and six, talking loudly. When I got upstairs, they were at the end of the hallway around a corner, and they were pushing their hands against the door to the attic, as if trying to keep someone or something from coming through. We gotta shut it. Help us shut it. They half shouted and half whispered. I'm already on edge because of the house and the stories my aunt and uncle had shared with us regarding paranormal activity, and so when I put my hand up against the old heavy attic door, I absolutely shat when I felt something pushing back from the other side. I paused for a moment in shock, then quickly and forcefully slammed it shut. Thank goodness, the girls thanked me, as if this were like a normal bedtime thing for them, and went back to their rooms to go to sleep. I noped the heck out back downstairs. My aunt and uncle returned later that evening, and I mentioned it to my uncle as he drove me home. He just kind of chuckled and said something to the effect of, yeah, sounds about right. I have a few more about this particular house, if anyone is interested. If I'm babysitting a couple of kids and they start pushing against the door and ask me for help and I feel something pushing behind it and I know we're home alone, we're leaving. I lived in a house where the previous owner had died at the bottom of the stairs. We didn't know or learn that until we moved out and it was sort of just a big ah moment because we'd always joked about the place being haunted due to the sheer amount of weird shit that went on in it. On multiple occasions, the TV in the downstairs living room would switch on when I was the only one home and was also upstairs in my room. On one occasion, while cleaning my room, I was moving some anime figures, I was a teenager, lol, and when I turned away from the shelf they were on, one of the smaller ones straight up flew by my head like it was thrown. There's no way it would have just fallen like that. It cleared like half the damn room and nearly got me in the back of the head. Looping back to the owner dying at the bottom of the stairs. Those stairs were awful, not because they were designed wrong or at an angle or particularly steep or anything. They were just fine as stairs, no problems. However, every single time someone walked up or down them, there would be a near fall at the very least. If you were walking up them, you would get this strange feeling that something was pushing you backwards. Walking down them, strange feeling of something pushing you forwards every time, without fail. No matter who walked up or down the stairs, even the cats took an occasional and thankfully always minor tumble on those damn things. Didn't matter how careful you were either. I got that weird feeling of being pushed forward once more strongly than usual and actually lost my balance. Luckily, I had the mind to kind of just lean backwards and hold a railing while walking down them at that point so I wouldn't land face first on the floor there and crack my head open. I ended up losing balance, falling on my ass, and sliding down them. Bruised my tailbone so badly I couldn't walk for a few days. I had to straight up crawl to the landline so I could call my mom and tell her what happened, and it took a while because F man, that shit hurt. I've never had issues with any other staircases, but I still can't walk down any without holding the railing and going slowly. She got me paranoid as F about stairs. Not me, but a story passed on to me by my grandma about my now late aunt. In all seriousness, I think it was just a hell of a coincidence, but it is still pretty damn spooky. A bit of context. My aunt was an assistant costume designer for a lot of famous movies and Broadway productions. Casino with Robert De Niro, Marvin's Room with Leonardo DiCaprio, Ransom with Mel Gibson. She was the head of the puppet shop for the original Lion King musical, and I'm pretty sure she worked on the first production of Cats. So, to be clear, costume design and everything that goes into that production of a major feature film or Broadway musical is grueling, and there is a crazy drug culture that you're probably going to get sucked into. My aunt lost her sense of smell from cocaine use. It's bad. On to the story. Back in the 90s, my grandma went to New Orleans on vacation, and my aunt, ever the eccentric, asked her to bring back a dozen voodoo dolls, my grandma agreed, I believe she wanted to take home one as a souvenir for herself as well, and eventually she found herself touring one of the many little tourist trap museums in the city. The tour was fine, then she ended up in the gift shop, browsing their selection of dolls. For the record, my grandma is a huge, nearly six foot tall Jewish woman from the Bronx, so she's insanely abrasive and has zero reservations about speaking up if she wants something, at the expense of any social niceties. It's made going out to eat with her extremely embarrassing, but I digress. Anyway, she looked at the tour guide and owner, I wasn't clear on that part, and loudly announced that their selection of voodoo dolls was lousy. 
and asked if they had anything better. Turns out, they did. Tour guide or owner led her into a back room where a couple of people were working on making the dolls. The selection back there, she said, was far superior to the ones in the front. The tour guide then asked what specifically she was looking for. My grandma said she needed a dozen for my aunt, one for her, preferably one that had a little something for her knee pain, which bothered her mostly at night, and then one to protect my uncle, who had recently taken to motorcycle riding. She wanted something so he wouldn't get into a wreck. The tour guide provided. He gave her a dozen dolls, then one which he did say would help with the knee pain. Just place it under your bed at night, and then one for good luck my uncle could hang on the handlebars of his motorcycle. So that was that. She went home, followed the directions, her knee pain went away. My uncle thought it was silly, but humored her by hanging up the doll, and the doll's credit, he never got into any accident. My money is just on the fact that the dolls worked as a placebo, or my grandma's knee pain was merely a temporary ailment that went away naturally, and my uncle was just a safe biker. But the real story is with the dozens she gave to my aunt. So at this point in time, my aunt had moved to Las Vegas to work on the film Casino, and she brought the dolls with her to hang up in her office. One of her co-workers took a liking to one of the dolls, which just so happened to also be my aunt's favorite. Eventually, the co-worker asked if she could have the doll. My aunt shut that down real quick. Absolutely not. It was a present from her mom. It was hers. And not only that, it was also the best one of the bunch. She wasn't giving it away. He offered to buy it. No dice. He tried a few more times after this to convince my aunt to let him have the doll, but she remained firm. Then the doll went missing. It was pretty obvious what happened to it. The guy took it. And this was confirmed once his office was cleared out and they found it in one of his desk drawers. You see, the office had to be cleared because three days after the doll went missing, they found this coworker floating face down dead in a pool. Now, I'm a skeptic. I don't believe in magic or ghosts. I don't even like astrology. I am the most mundane person you'll ever meet. If you ask me, I'd say it was a work party. They found coke in a system. I expect he fell into the pool while on a coke binge and drowned and no one found him until the next morning because they were all either high or drunk themselves. That being said, it is a little creepy, and I can't help but wonder if somehow that little voodoo doll tugged at his karmic strings so that maybe he took a little too much. Maybe he stepped a little too close. Maybe, just maybe, in some weird, vague, and highly metaphysical way, it arranged for him to drown. Probably not, but still. Crazy, right? So, what do you guys think? Voodoo as a whole, a placebo type effect or something a little bit more. I spent my late childhood and early adulthood in this house, situated in a nature reserve in Brazil. Several weird things happened here and there, like a snake mysteriously showing up in my fully closed room, missing objects here and there, trees that seemed misplaced from one day to the next, but one thing kind of stands out. Now, I should start off by saying I'm pretty cynical. I'm an atheist and I don't really believe in paranormal stuff myself. I usually explain away all the crap that happened. Snake? Crack in the foundation of the house. Likely got in like that. Object missing? I probably lost them outside the house. Trees moving? I just misremembered where they were. That said, this was weird. This one night, I was just starting up the stairs. The benefit of living in a nature reserve is a lack of public lighting and my dog started barking. Now, it was a new moon night, so it was particularly dark, so I couldn't see much, but the dogs really rarely barked unprompted. I got up from where I sat to go check on what they were barking at. To my mind, it was probably just one of the little creatures we sometimes get visits from, armadillos, mice, possum. I was wrong. At the edge of the property, I saw what looked like a deer, the kind I knew only from American horror movies with antlers and shit. That was already weird. To my knowledge, those don't really exist below the equator, but all right. I tell the dogs to shush, thinking something along the lines of, edge, eh, just the plants, nothing to worry about. But the thing starts to move. It stands up, over the fence we had there. Mind you, the fence was like two meters tall, so this thing is massive. As soon as it was upright, it let out a bleat that sounded like a woman's scream. In the split second it did this, I just ran with the dogs inside the house and sheltered myself under the table. Never saw that thing again, thank God. 
I was in the US Air Force, stationed in Italy in 1986. My wife and I lived off base. No home phone, and cell phones weren't a real thing for most people. We had been asleep for a couple of hours when my wife wakes up shaking. Something's happened to my brother. She was so upset I drove her down to a payphone down the street where she made a collect call to her mother who lived in Virginia. Her brother had been shot. Her mom had contacted the Red Cross to get a message to us overseas and she was surprised they had gotten a hold of us so quickly. So I had her pack our bags knowing we would be flying home the next day after the message got through. I didn't expect my NCO to look at me like I was crazy. When the Red Cross message came in, they still seemed to believe I had made up the story for some reason. 